Hey friends, it's Mel, and welcome to my kitchen. Tonight, I'm bringing you three very delicious, quick, easy meals that your family will love, and a dessert that is perfect for Easter. If that sounds good to you, just sit back, relax, grab you some sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Hey friends, welcome to my kitchen. I'm so glad to have you here tonight. We are going to start out another video with a cook with me. I'm making a taco pizza. So I'm gonna bring you along. I should actually be able to get this pizza crust to fill this whole thing. And this is what I'm using. This I bought this a long time ago and it actually expires April 8th. So this is perfect timing. I was gonna do something else with it and I just never got around to it. I'm also preheating my oven to 400 degrees. I'm going to get this spread out and then we will pre-bake it about 8 or 10 minutes. You could throw a little cornmeal down on the bottom of this and that would make it have like a nice little crunch. But I'm just going to put it down here. I have not ever made this little recipe. Quite honestly, I don't really remember using this pizza crust before either. But we're just going to unroll it and wow there won't be much smushing it out it's a pretty good size little crust but you know we want it not super thick but i don't want it super thin either because we're making this a taco pizza and it says you use two pounds of taco meat wow i could have really got this on a bigger pan. I just really thought this dough was going to be really little for some reason. So anyhow, we're like a 9 by 13, but that will be plenty for our family. In the meantime, we're over here just browning up two pounds of hamburger meat. I need to get my apron on or get my old clothes on. I'm going to have grease on myself. But here's what we're using tonight. I found these, the McCormick Cheesy Taco. I had the old El Paso ones, but my friend uh, Kathy, this is actually what she used. And I was just going to make a pound of meat and use the um, old El Paso. But when I went back and looked at this recipe, I knew I had to run to Walmart. And um, I was going to see if there was anything maybe that I didn't know I was going to be needing. And it actually said to use two pounds of hamburger meat, two pounds of taco. So I don't know if we'll fill that up or not. I might go ahead and put that on a bigger pan. I don't know. Let the scientist here get out my measuring tape again. I'm, I mess so many things up. I just want to be sure. Let's see how big this one is. What am I trying to get to? 10 by 15. Okay, so this is 10. And this is a little, this is like 16. Okay, let's go for it. You know how I hate to mess up dishes, but I'm doing it. I had this pan all ready to go, but I think we can stretch this crust out. We're gonna do it. Okay, I'm already reg regretting it, I think. Okay. So we know it's supposed to be this wide. Oh yeah, this is good. I'll fill that hole in, don't you worry. Okay, here's what we got. And my oven is preheated to 400. I'm gonna stick it in for eight minutes. I'm gonna show you a little trick. I may have showed it to you before. If not, you'll see for the first time in here, I have one of my bowls that is like, um, you know, it's not going to melt. It's like a, a real ceramic bowl. I line that with aluminum foil, and then I just put my little strainer over the top. And this skillet is so big. I have a hard time with this skillet, so it's going to take me a second here. I just let my meat drain over that bowl, and then when you pull it up, all your grease is left in that aluminum foil. And you can just let it harden up, and then you can just throw it away. You don't have to worry about it, like, being a liquid or anything in your trash. 
Now, all your grease is just left right in here. Let's get this meat back in here and spread out a little bit. Now, don't think I'm crazy. I had never seen this, but these cheesy taco seasonings, instead of water, you add milk. I'm using two packs, so I have put in a cup and a half. Use three-fourths a cup for each pack. And again, here's what I'm using. McCormick Cheesy Taco. And my crust is about pre-baked. Okay, there is how my crust is looking. It's not really pre-baked. It's called a par-bake. And you just do it like you would regular um, taco meat, except instead of water, you're using the milk. I can't wait to try this. Okay, we'll let that cook down just a smidgen more, and then we'll start assembling. It doesn't say to use taco sauce or anything like that on here, like a pizza sauce, but we're going to put our meat over here onto the crust. And we're going to throw some on the stove by, get it nice and burnt on. <laughs> you guys don't ever miss a thing. You know it. When I first started doing YouTube, I used to really worry about that stuff. And I'd always keep my stovetop so clean and I'd get all these comments talking about how nice and clean it was, which I appreciate y'all being so sweet and saying that. But boy, you really used to worry about it. But now... You guys are like family, so hopefully you feel like you're home here. But I say all that to say this. I did clean my top of my stovetop the other night. It was really needing it. But anyway, I appreciate y'all noticing that. That did not slip by you. There were so many comments after I did that about, your stove is always so clean. <laughs> and I was like, y'all are so smart. You don't miss a thing. And I want you to look here. This is the whole two pounds of meat. The next thing it said was a four ounce can of green chilies. And I guess we just kind of spread them out a little bit at a time. I'm going to try to drain a little bit of the juice off just like with my spoon as I do it. I guess if you don't like chilies, you could leave this off. This just gives it a little extra flavor. This is another thing that's very customizable. Only put on what your family likes. Like some big black olives would be beautiful on the top of this when we get done. But everybody in this house would just pick them off. So I'm not going to do it. It says to take two cups of cheese over it. Whatever you like. I'm going to finish up this bag of Colby Jack. I think this melts very pretty. Now I've got some Monterey Jack. This is probably two cups. And this oven is still at 400 degrees, and I'm going to put it back in here for about 10 or 15 more minutes. Oh, wow, this is heavy. Looks like my meat rendered a little bit more grease while it was cooking. Maybe got a little bit too done. I checked it at 10 minutes, and I gave it a couple more. Hopefully, it will be fine, though. You could probably use crescents or anything. Yeah, I think it's going to be fine. Just be like a regular old greasy pizza. I'm going to scoot it down that way a little bit. Okay, now you could top this whole thing and make a beautiful presentation. I'm not going to do that, though, because everybody likes what they like. We'll just top ours with our own. I've got shredded lettuce, sour cream, some salsa, this stuff. It needs to be shook up almost gone i got a new one though and some cheese and then i'll grab us some chips out we'll show you our plates oh my goodness friends we absolutely loved the taco pizza and like i said you could use crescent rolls if you didn't have a pizza crust you could even just use some canned biscuits but this was so good so easy and just customizable to what your family loves. Do be careful and do not overbake your crust like I did. And just watch out for your grease. I would definitely put a little cornmeal under my crust the next time too to make it feel like you're getting pizza out. 
Now we've got a crock pot meal. I always keep these items right here on hand. This is one of our favorite go-tos. I've sprayed my crock pot and I'm putting in three frozen chicken breasts. You could even go four if you wanted. And I'm using a 16 ounce bottle of creamy Italian dressing that's Kroger brand. It's just like the Olive Garden dressing that they sell in the store. I'm putting in one can of cream of chicken soup. And I'm not using salt because this is very salty, but I am throwing in about a half a teaspoon of pepper. And then I'm throwing in some chopped garlic as well. I'm using the canned Italian cheese. I'm using about a half a cup of that. If you have shredded Parmesan, that is very good in here and it's also good to put it on the top of it whenever you serve it. But I'm just taking a spoon, kind of mixing it up and making sure my chicken breasts are covered. And I'm just going to put one block of cream cheese right over the top of it, put the lid on it, and I cooked mine on high for four hours. You could go low all day long if you wanted. You see how nice that's cooked up and I'm taking my little meat chopper and just going through here and chopping up the chicken and I'll kind of stir that cream cheese in too so it can start getting really smooth. And then I'm just going to put the lid back on it while I prepare the pasta. And I'm using a 16 ounce box of penne pasta. You can use whatever kind you want. And I've got some leftover hamburger buns over there that I'm just making some garlic bread with. Once my pasta is all cooked up, I'll take about half of it and mix it in to my creamy chicken mixture and then I'll come back with the rest of it. To me, that's just a little bit easier way to get it all mixed together. And just be careful because this is a very oily dressing, so if you don't have enough pasta and chicken and all that, it could be a little overwhelming, especially if you're not a big fan of the Olive Garden dressing. But if you like that dressing, you will absolutely love this crock pot meal. I always love to have a big side salad. This is one of my family's favorites, and we eat leftovers off this too. Now we're going to have a cheeseburger in paradise. You start out just browning up a pound of hamburger meat and you want to put in about a small or medium diced onion. Cook all that up together and then drain it. When you get it back in the pan, you're going to just put in a dash or two of Worcestershire. This is kind of just to your taste. Then we're going to go in with about half a teaspoon of garlic powder and half a teaspoon of Lowry seasoning salt. You just want to season this how you think you're going to like it. You know I like recipes that you don't have to have exact measurements. You can see here I didn't feel like that was going to be enough garlic flavor so I put a little bit more of that in. And then you'll see me come back in here a little while later and I don't think I have enough Worcestershire either. So you're just going to get all of that incorporated like you want it. Then I've just got a pie plate greased and I'm going to put my meat mixture down in that pie plate. Now to cover this, you're going to use a cup of cheese. You can use whatever you like, but this recipe suggests using about three-fourths of cheddar and a fourth of mozzarella. And that's what I did this time and that was very, very good. Now, when I found this recipe, I found it under the name Cheeseburger in Paradise, and that caught my attention because I am a Jimmy Buffett fan, but I think this is just an old Bisquick recipe. And to make that Bisquick topping, you're going to use a half a cup of Bisquick or bacon mix, whatever you call it, and a cup of milk and two eggs. You want to make sure that you do get this mixed up really good and try to get out as much of the lumps as you can. And you're just very simply going to pour that right over the top of this. It sort of gives it a quiche type feel whenever you're putting this together. And I am baking this at 400 degrees for 25 minutes. 
Now, while this is in the oven, if you watched last week's video, you know exactly what's happening here. Fried zucchini and squash had to go down again just for me. So if you want better instructions laid out for this, I'll have last week's video linked down in the description box for you so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Now there comes the cheeseburger in paradise. You see how nice that cooks up and it does look and taste a lot like a quiche. I absolutely love this. The cheesiness, the breading, the hamburger and onion. It's all just the most wonderful flavor. I had some green beans on the side for the rest of the family and I had my fried up zucchini and squash and we all had corn. Now here comes the buttermilk cake that I showed you last week. You're going to use a butter cake or just a regular yellow cake. It does not matter at all and you're just going to cook it up just like the directions on the back of the box say for a 13 by 9 pan. Then you're going to take a wooden spoon. You need one that has circles and you just poke holes all in your cake. You could use a regular fork, but I really like the big holes. You're going to make a topping out of one cup of sugar, one stick of butter, and a half a cup of buttermilk. You're just going to heat this on top of the stove and bring it up to a nice boil. Once you get it boiling, you're just going to add in a little bit of vanilla and cut it off and stir it all in together. While it's still nice and hot, you're going to pour it right over that cake that you've poked the holes in. It's going to turn into a beautiful glaze and it's going to keep that cake so wet and it is so good. Once you get it all covered up, you're just going to put the lid on it and I put it in the refrigerator and let it set overnight. The next night we bring this puppy out and you can see the glaze. It is so pretty and I like mine cold. Sometimes Patrick will heat his up in the microwave, but this is probably Patrick and my brother's favorite cake. My mom always makes it for their birthdays and stuff like that. It's so simple, so quick and easy, but it's perfect every single time. This would be a wonderful cake for Easter. You've got your hands full making all the other foods. This would be a simple dessert that will please everybody. And that buttermilk, it just takes on this wonderful flavor when you put it with that sugar and that butter and boil it up like that. It is so good. Friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video tonight. I really don't think you could go wrong with any of these dishes this week. They are tried, true, family favorites, and then this new taco dish. It really made me think of the taco ring, which I haven't made in a while. We may have to have that again soon. Again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate and do not take for granted the time that you set aside each week to spend with me. I absolutely love this encouraging community that we have here. You all mean more than you'll ever know to me. I appreciate you. I love you. And until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.